Now, the window dropdown inside of Photoshop is incredibly intimidating because it has this feeling of being the et cetera section. And most people who look at it are like, I know what maybe seven of these do, or maybe I even know what half of these do, but the other half of them are absolutely ridiculous. There are 35 windows listed here. So to give you a little bit of context, here are all 35 of the windows in the absolute scariest way I could imagine showing them possible. Now, for people who are using other graphics programs, they look at this and it's like, well, it's not as bad as something like After Effects or certainly not as bad as Cinema 4D here. But for other people who are using Photoshop, compared to a Word or an Excel, it's absolutely ridiculous. Whichever boat you fall in, I wanna walk you through all of them. I'm not gonna do it alphabetically as it's shown here because that would be very, very boring. Instead, I'm gonna do it in a little bit more categorized sort of way so you can actually remember what I'm teaching you. So let's start with the absolute essential panels. If you open up Photoshop with no windows open whatsoever, it looks like this. There's no panels open, and there's a few panels that you just need, and those are located down here. These are the three very, very essential panels, and they're things like the tools, the tool options. So if you double click on any of the tools, then you get the option bar, which I'm sure you've seen before. It just changes depending on which tool you're on. Great. And then finally, if you wanna do things like dock these to the side, make it connect right there, you need to open the application frame. And chances are all of these are already open. So let's dock this to the side, if we can get it to work. And let's dock the option bar up here. And this is pretty default right there. And they're located down here because the assumption is they're always on. And the reason they have them listed here is in case at any point you're asking yourself, where did my tools go? Where did my options bar go? Know that you can just go down here and be able to say, oh, yay, I know where they are now. Great, maybe you hit tab, maybe you did something else, but it made them disappear. And inside a window, those appear again. So there are a couple other essential windows that I wanna show you that I think you should always have open because they're great. One of them is layers, and I'm sure if you've been using Photoshop, this is nothing new. So let me open this up in a, a new document, and let's real quickly just create a couple of example layers. The big thing that the layer palette allows you to do is if you have a bunch of layers, or a bunch of images, text, all of that, and you wanna change what is above which one, you can drag it above inside of the layers palette and it shows which is above which. Now, obviously there's other things you can do inside of the layers palette. For instance, if I go down to this half moon cookie icon and click on hue saturation, it creates a color adjustment layer. So here we go. When I do that, so here I can change it, yay, look at that. It's changing all of the colors in all of the layers underneath it. And what I want to point out when I did that is it popped up this window right here, this panel, and this is the window properties panel. And it's another one of the absolutely essential panels. So I'm gonna dock that down right here. And what I wanna point out is pay attention to the properties panel when I click on different layers, different properties appear. And the absolute final example that I wanted to show you is the undo window, history. So it shows you all of the history of everything you've done. So when you hit Command Z, undo, 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 undo. Uh, and then let's say you wanna compare two different save states, two different history states. You can click here, then hit Command Z, Command Shift Z, Command Z, Command Shift Z to switch between different history states, which is really nice if you wanna compare, oh, this is what it's looking like before, and this is what I've changed it to. So we're going to push this into a tab window right here. So I consider these layers, properties, tools, options, the application frame, as well as history hidden over there, the absolute essential windows, regardless of what you're doing in Photoshop. So let's go through some of the different categories of types of panels. So here we go. Color, text, brushes, and vector. And I'm gonna show you these uh, six panels, and then I'm gonna show you inside of these same categories, the libraries for colors. So a bunch of different color presets, the library for text, let's just get to it. Okay, so we'll go here, color and adjustments. So these are window color. And all this allows you to do is change the foreground color. So that's located right here. You can just click on this little icon, but if you wanna change it in a different way, so if I wanna change it like this, just by having 
a more interesting interface. There's all sorts of different interfaces to choose from up here. There's even the ability to change swatches, which we'll get to in a little bit. So it's just a different way to interface with selecting color. Pretty simple, let's not spend forever on each of these. Adjustments is the other thing with color. This does something very different. This adds more color adjustment layers. So I could add a gradient map like that. I could add a hue saturation. I could change things to black and white. Um, or just about anything else. It's the same thing as going here and selecting them this way, but you do it in a single button. So that's really good if you're doing a lot of, say, photo manipulation, or even more importantly, just color adjustment in general. So that's color, color and adjustments. Text, uh, it's honestly not that complicated. It's the character panel and it's the paragraph panel, but the best way to get to that is if you hit T for your text tool and you look inside of the options bar here, let's select our text. I'm just gonna escape out of that. If you look inside of your options bar, instead of going to window character, you can just hit this little icon and then your character and paragraph windows appear and you can do all of the wonderful things that you'd think to do in any other program. So I'm not gonna show you all the options. You get the idea with char character and paragraph. Brushes. So if I hit B for brushes and go here, same idea. Instead of going to select it right here, I am going to select it right here. And then I get lots of brush options. Let's just create a new layer with Command Shift N. And a normal brush looks like this. Yay, it's a normal brush. But there are all sorts of options that you can do. Uh, so this brush is now looking like this. The idea is there's all sorts of things to play with. Please, please check this out yourself because it's pretty cool. Whoa, I did that. Here we go. I did this with a single click of a button. Great. All right, let's get out of this. And that's where all of the brush settings are to change it from a single tip to like really doing all sorts of stuff that we're not getting into. Here, I'm gonna turn this into a clipping mask by holding down Option and clicking in between the two layers and then clicking. Yay, now it only shows where the layer underneath it is revealed. So, sure, why not? Next up is Vector. And if you've never done anything with Vector inside of Photoshop, this is a bad place to start. By default, if you go to the Shape tool, it's going to be set on Shape and you'll get something that looks like this. Here, let's just create a new layer. You'll get something that looks like this. Yay, it's a circle. But you can also set this to path, and then you can use the path for all sorts of things. So here we go. I'm going to create a path, and then I'm going to go into Window, Path, or Paths. And if I wanted to do something such as fill it in with the foreground color, undo, or what's my brush look like? All right, cool. Uh, make it so that becomes the brush that goes along it. And again, if I go to the brush panel and change it so the brush is different, then the border becomes different, yay! Or turn the path into a selection. Although, honestly, the thing that I use the path tool for, or the path panel for the most, is if I create a path, so here we go, I'm just gonna create a path right here, and then I click on different layers, if I'm not able to deselect this path, then I like to open up the path panel and then just deselect it right here. And you can have multiple paths. You can do all sorts of things with this. You can turn it into a mask. You can turn, oh, this is actually kind of interesting. You can turn a selection into a path. And sometimes it works well, often it doesn't. The path panel is just a bunch of nice options when working with paths. All right, now with each of these categories of panels, color, text, brush, and vector, there's also options for their libraries, as I was saying earlier. So for instance, inside of color, there's a library of options. You can choose between different gradients, different swatches. So the gradients, if you're on a layer and you click a gradient, it adds a gradient to that layer. One thing to notice when you do that is if you try moving the layer after adding a gradient, you might run into problems. And that's because it's trying to move this adjustment layer, this gradient layer, rather than here. What I would do is I would just click on this layer below, just specifically click this layer, and then just hit Command T, and then you'll be able to transform this layer. So just, just something to be aware of if you run into that problem. Swatches is just a bunch of different swatches. So you can change the foreground layer and do whatever you would, or foreground color, foreground color, and then just do whatever you would with that foreground color. And you can obviously add swatches by going to foreground uh, the foreground color and then clicking on add a swatch. So great, we have a swatch added, yay. And we'll get to this window in a second. Moving on to more library options. Uh, inside of text, there's the simple one, which is glyphs. So if I go to window glyphs, this is basically the same as glyphs in any program. Here we go. 
I'm just going to create a new text layer. And this just allows me to add characters that I wouldn't otherwise know how to get to. So different fonts have different glyphs within them. The next two libraries within the character set are character styles and paragraph styles. And for our sake, they work relatively similar. Inside of InDesign, they're, they're very different, but in Photoshop, your chances are you're only going to be doing so much with text. So I'm only going to show you character styles and just know that paragraph styles is a version of that on speed. So I'm just gonna create a bunch of different versions of this just for example's sake, you know? And then I'm gonna change this top one so it is a, a cool, crazy font. I don't know. And it's blue and it's a different size. And then I am going to add a character style. So here we go. And I'm gonna name this Blue Metal. Great. And then I'm gonna click here and I'm going to say overwrite the current uh, styles for Blue Metal. And I need to click blue metal first in order for that to work. So I click here, click on blue metal, and then click overwrite, done. And what's really nice about this is if I go in and then say change blue metal to red, and then say, yes, apply this to all of them, it will change all of them to red. And actually for that reason, when naming styles, don't name it blue metal, name it title, name it paragraph. And that way, if you need to change it from red to blue to a different font, you don't need to change the name of the style. It's just like good formatting right there. So that's what character styles are right there. It allows you to change the formatting of one to all of them. It's really great. I have created a very ugly style, but so we're gonna delete that. And we're gonna keep moving on with different windows, different panels. I use those words interchangeably just to confuse everyone. Okay, so the uh, library inside of brushes is exactly what you'd expect. So here we go, that's my current very sexy brush. If we go here, we get the various brush settings. And then if I click here, I can see a library of all sorts of other brushes. Here's a brush, here's a brush, here's an eraser, and here's another brush. And if you want even more brushes, just click on this button here and say, get more brushes, and you can access things like uh, Kyle's brushes, which are fantastic and have everything. All right, and finally, in terms of library options, inside of the vector, there is shapes. So if I go to Window Shapes, I can add all sorts of shapes to my canvas. So here we go. I have a wonderful sailboat. Um, this is the sort of thing that if you, here we go, if you have a logo, if you have something like that, you can add them into the shapes uh, menu. And those are all of the library options. Now, there's a couple of options uh, beyond those that add styles, add patterns. So let me show you that. Let's say you wanna add some sort of texture onto this. If you go to Window, Patterns, you can add all sorts of textures. You can create a bunch of them yourself. Let's put this on a layer mode, I don't know. Lighten, there, that looks good. You can create all sorts of patterns yourself. That's inside of Define Patterns. We're not gonna get into that. But there's a lot of great options there and it works very similarly to Window Styles. So Window Styles, Instead of adding it as its own layer, its own pattern type layer as a clipping mask, uh, instead of adding it like that, let's delete this, it adds it as a, so if you double click on a layer, you can change all sorts of options inside of it. Here we go, drop shadows, normal shadows, pattern overlays, and that's really what we're gonna be getting into here. So the styles window changes things exactly like that. So as you can see, it goes into the layer, and it adds all sorts of things, including pattern overlays. So styles versus patterns, similar end results, but they just accomplish it in different ways. Wow, now we're cooking with fire. Look at this, look at this incredible design that we've concocted for us. What a clearly great class, what a great example. All right, and then there's the one that combines all of the different tools, and it's kind of a library for your tools or for what you're doing. So let me show you what I mean. Let's say you go to the crop tool. So I just hit C to go to the crop tool or you can click on this icon right here. Up here, you have a bunch of options. Do you wanna crop it as four by six, five by three, five by four, et cetera. Or you can create your own options. So if I wanna make this 10 by four by 300 for whatever reason, I could then here, I'm just gonna hit escape a couple of times. Those are still saved. And then I can add the option 10 by four by 300. Great. And then obviously I can delete that. Now I can either get to that, and I can get to that for each of the tools. See this drop down? It allows me to create presets 
for just about every tool. Well, you can create them for every tool, but they're only useful for certain tools. You can also get there through the tool presets drop down, and that's literally the same thing just located in a different place that you can drag around. So that's just kind of a library of tool presets. But the library that I really wanted to show you, the most exciting library, is this one. And it's called Libraries. So here, let me open it up. And what it does is it combines all of these other library panels, all of these other, okay, you get it, uh, library panels into a single place. So I'm going to close out of this. And I'm going to do things like, oh, I love this pattern style. I want to apply it to a bunch of different places. I can go to this plus sign and say layer style. Great. Now we can apply this to another layer. So I'll just go here. Here we go. I'm going to go to this layer and I'm going to double click. Yay, it's added. Let's say that I like the way that this text looks. I'm going to add a character style. Instead of doing it in the character style window, I'm doing it here. Let's say I like the shape. I can just literally drag it into here. And there are so many things you can add. Let's say I like a color. Um, if I click here and I add, add foreground color, it adds the foreground color. If I want to add a gradient, I just drag and drop the gradient from the layers panel onto the libraries. And what's great about this is not only do you have all of your different um, like colors, gradient, shapes, styles, characters, th there's more you can add as well. You can create this for different projects that you're using. So while the other library windows that I was showing you are good throughout the program and you can kind of create different brush sets, etc. Oh, you can also add brushes. Here we go. Boom, I got a brush. You can add different brushes that you use constantly throughout the program. The libraries window is great internally within a project. This is the brush I use. These are the colors I use. And then you're able to be consistent whenever you're opening up a file in that project. And this libraries window is consistent through whatever Adobe CC program you're using. So I open this up in Photoshop, I get this. I open this up in After Effects, in InDesign, and in Premiere, in anything, I'm going to get these same options. And it means that there's certain things that you can't put in here, but overall, you're able to create a great library that allows you to be consistent throughout your project. So this libraries panel is absolutely huge. And it makes it so a lot of these other library panels aren't really all that ne necessary. Paragraph styles inside of Photoshop, not that necessary. All right, let's keep going with different windows. We are coming close to the finish. So colors, text, brush, vectors, some effects, and then here it is combined. That's kind of a way to categorize a lot of it. So let's move on to beginner panels. These are real quick, I promise. Learn allows you to learn some of the options. I prefer YouTube videos, but I'm biased. And then Navigator allows you to do things like zoom in and move around when zoomed in. Yay! Which is great unless you know Command minus is zoom out, Command plus is zoom in, and holding down spacebar and clicking allows you to navigate around the image. And if you have all of those, you never need to look at your navigator. Command zero is show the full screen. All right, so Command plus, Command minus, spacebar and click, and then Command zero to see the full screen. Never need your navigator. These are nice beginner panels but you don't need them because you're too good for that. All right. The info panels are these three right here, and these are really interesting. So if I go to Window Info, then essentially what it does is it just shows me the color information. It shows me where I am inside of the canvas. If I'm creating a selection, it shows me the width and the height. This is really good if you're doing anything with a user interface and you've decided for some reason to not use Sketch or XD. Windows gives you the information, excuse me, channels gives you the information of what are the three channels that make up the full color of the image. The red channel, green channel, and blue channel combine to create the full RGB color spectrum. And there is so much more, so, so, so much more that I could say about this because channels at their heart are the key, the key to good selection, the key to good color correction, the key to so much. I, I just want to briefly show you that if I have a red, green, and blue, um, like a RGB, red, green, blue layers, they show up as literally white on each of these. You can combine them, you can see all of them. If I add them uh, to, oops, let's click on RGB, 
And if I add them so they're all in lighten mode, so they're literally adding to each other, you can see how all of these colors start to combine. And even though they're just circles in each of this, more colors are able to reveal themselves. If you combine them all together, you get white. There's there's so much I could say about channels, but but for here, all you need to know is it's showing the red, green, and blue. And even though it is it is so much to do with selection and so much to do with color correction, that's all you're getting right here. We're just talking about the windows. While we're at it, let me also show you histogram because it's another thing that shows you a lot of the information. So here we go. This just kind of shows you by default, it looks like this. In fact, by default, I think it, it might even look like this, but we're gonna set it so we can see all three colors and we are going to make it so we can see all channels, red, green, green, blue. And if I add a levels uh, change to this, you can see that this actually allows someone who's changing the colors to see where they're doing things such as clipping the colors, which will make it so all of the lights turn white. And you can see that it's literally clipping here. And it will also show you where there's a huge dearth of not enough colors happening at all, which might be good. It might be what you want. So the histogram really gives you a lot more information to work with when you're doing color correction. That's all I'm going to say about that. All right, let's bring this to a close because I think we've gone on long enough as is. Okay, clone source. Let's just go here again. If I'm using my stamp tool, I can click on here to get to clone source. Yay. So I just have clone source right there. And then here, let's just create a new, um, there we go. We just created a new layer, command shift N. Cloning works like this. Clone source allows you to do things like rotate where you're cloning from, allows you to change it. But honestly, I do a lot with fixing up photos and changing them, and I never use clone source. The only thing I've ever used it for is to change the opacity on the overlay from 100% to maybe something less, and to turn off the overlay when my computer was getting slow. By opening up this window that I never used, I don't like clone source. Please, someone in the comments, sell me on why anyone would ever use it. I think it's terrible. And I do a lot with cloning. I'm going to delete that. No one wants to see that. All right, the next thing is notes. Notes allow you to leave notes in different parts of the document. So if you go to your notes tool, a tool that nobody uses, you probably are going to even have trouble finding it because it'll be somewhere in the et cetera section of your tools bar. It's just basically a deprecated tool. Here's a note. Couldn't even spell note right. Here's another. And then you can basically go through these different notes, but they just appear on screen. And while you can move them around in theory, they're just over the image. And if you don't know what they are, it's kind of like, what are these things? Sure, you'll double click them, you'll see them, but you need both people to be using Photoshop. I'm sure there might be some workplace where they use notes, but for most of us plebs, it's not something you will ever, ever use. And in a similar way, in a similar way, let me open up another uh, image to show you this absolutely useless tool for most of us. Maybe it's used by, by some engineers, but uh, engineers um, by some architects, but even then I suspect that's not the case. Okay, so this next tool that I wanted to show you is measurement log. So we're gonna open it up right here. Often it's automatically docked to the bottom. And what it allows you to do is if you click record measurement after having used your ruler tool to uh, create a measurement, all right, this is 684. So if you go in and you say set measurement scale custom, uh, pixel length 684 equals 600 miles. There we go. And now, because you've set 684 pixels to 600 miles, that's how this converts, you can figure out that if you go from King's Landing, what a dated reference, Game of Thrones, Oof. King's Landing to the wall, and then hit record, by how the crow flies, that is 2,081 miles. So that's what that tool does. It allows you to measure different distances by setting a scale Obviously, that was a very quick once over it, but that's all you need to get because it's not a tool that anybody uses that I know of. All right, and then finally, let's finish this up with a few crazy powerful panels. So if I go into 3D and I say 3D extrusion and I make sure that I'm on this layer and I say create, 
and then you can see that it changes this into 3D. The 3D panel gives me lots of options, so many options. And then the properties panel, when I click any of these, gives me even more options for each. This is a world unto itself. And we're not gonna get into it, but if you wanna do 3D, there is a panel for it, the 3D panel. In that same way, there is an animation panel if you're doing things with like animated GIFs. Here we go, I'm just gonna delete this, delete this, delete this. Great, now, oh, this looks so much prettier. I'm gonna to go to Window Timeline. Let's just dock this in right there. If I say Create Video Timeline, we now get options for creating a video timeline. I could go in and say, I want this to move from here to, here we go, let's just skip ahead, to here, and it will move from there to there, and then disappear because that's how I have it set up. Is there more you can do with this? Oh my God, yes, there is. There are even extensions, things like Animdescent, if you're seriously doing things with animation that allow you to really control the whole interface, we're not gonna get into it because that is, like I said, a world unto itself. So let's get out of this and let me show you the final, final two actions and layer comps. So actions, oh, I like actions. So actions, what they allow you to do is window actions, they create here we go, I'm gonna click this uh, plus icon, and we'll just do it inside of this document. To create a new action, I'm just going to call it rotate. Looks good. I'm gonna say Command T, let's do it on the bottom left corner, let's rotate it. Negative 45 degrees looks good. I say okay, I hit enter, and then I say stop. And then I'm just going to apply this to the next two, just by clicking on this layer, clicking on this layer and clicking on play, clicking on this layer and clicking play. I will use actions when I need to do things like save a bunch of images in a row to a different size, then you can kind of batch actions together. That's all that actions are right there. And then finally, layer comps allow you to make different versions of a canvas and go through them. So it basically turns on layers visibility and possibly their locations. So if we go here, look at the eye icons. You can see how this is turning on and off different layer groups depending on which layer comp I'm using. So you can look up layer comps to understand how to use them a bunch more. But I, I just wanted to go through these as quickly as I could. I, I know this took a while, but there's a lot of panels just so you have total context of what each of them are. And now you do. You understand 3D, actions, adjustments. I'm not gonna read all of them out, but when you look at them, these should all make sense. And actually, just to, just to finish this up, I, I do kind of want to do a couple more things. Let me show you the ones that you do need to worry about and the ones that you can kind of ignore now that we've gone through each of them. Tools, options, application, tools, options, and then the application frame, crucial. Layers are crucial, of course. The properties, crucial. And history, having your undos. All of those, absolutely essential. All right, if you're going into the libraries, color, Eh, I mean, if you do a lot with color, that's great, but otherwise you're just clicking on foreground colors. So for a lot of people, you don't really need to worry about it. Adjustments, if you're doing a lot with color correction, this is great. Otherwise, you're just going to use this icon. So eh, for a lot of people, not that important. Gradient, you'll maybe create a couple of gradients and then move them to the library. So most of the time, you don't need to worry about that. Swatches are nice. They combine with libraries. Maybe you're using the same swatch set. These are great, although you don't need to get to them by going to Windows Character Panel. Most people, when they get to them, they just click on this button right here. So for the most part, you can ignore them inside of that dropdown. Character styles, I would say just do it inside of libraries. I think it's a lot better just to do it that way. And glyphs, yeah, sure, you can keep that one on. Brush settings are good, but again, with that one, if you have your brush selected, you can just click on it right there. So I really wouldn't worry about going to it from here all that much. And then brushes, in the same sort of way, you're probably not going to go to it by window brushes. Probably the best way to get to it is by clicking here and then clicking here. It's just a little bit quicker. I don't like to go to drop downs when I don't have to. Paths, if you're using it, great. I don't tend to use it that much. And then shapes, same sort of thing. I'll normally just drag shapes into my library. So I don't worry about that. Styles, same thing. I'm just using libraries. Patterns, same thing. I'm just using libraries. If you're using the same patterns or the same styles from one project to another, maybe you'll use this. I don't tend to. So I'm gonna keep this on. And tool presets, honestly, it's absolutely no different than using this drop down here. So I really am not worried about that. So of all of these, 
meh, these are the only ones that I'm really concerned about. Here, I'll keep that on screen for a second more. And then just, I like the info panels. I certainly don't care about the beginner panels once I've done that. The basically useless panels, obviously I don't care about. I don't do much with 3D. I don't do much with uh, animation. I use actions, I use layer comps. So once you're left with it, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 panels that I actually use, and then these three bonus ones. So of the 35, most of them I basically ignore or get to a different way. I'm gonna show you one more thing. We're on a roll, it's happening. If you wanna simplify this, you can go to Edit, Menus, and then go to Window, and then you can actually turn off some of these windows. This is next level right here but I'm going to get rid of the ones that I don't tend to use or that I get to a completely different way and just show you that this is something that is absolutely possible. So I'm just gonna get rid of those first few. Okay, and now when I go to window, those first few aren't showing up. I'm gonna get rid of the rest really quickly. So now when I look at my window dropdown, it's a little bit easier to look at. So that is every single panel inside of the window dropdown. If I click on show all menu items, you can get all of them again. I hope this helped. I hope you enjoyed this. You know, click subscribe, do all of the things that you do to YouTube videos. My name's been Jeremy Schuback. My name's been Jeremy Schuback. I'm Jeremy Schuback. Thank you for joining me.